Hi guys, it's Maya here, and today I'm doing another video on JK Rowling, unfortunately. So I keep hoping after every headline that she makes in the recent past year that it will be the last one because she has had a steep decline into the territory of transphobia. Now I know that I have already talked about her on this channel and I covered her support of Maya Forstater and her tweets and her later released essay and I kind of talk about the topics she brings up and offer my rebuttal and just kind of explain how it really is verging on the transphobic territory. I know that it is a term that is used quite flippantly nowadays and a lot of trans people use it in comedic settings like this light is transphobic, that mirror is transphobic, like it can be used as a joke so there's a lot of casual association with that word now. It's not as much of a meaningful term in some ways, so people don't take it as seriously all the time. People say that everything is transphobic nowadays, not wanting to date people is transphobic, all of that kind of stuff, and I think that when you really get to the root of the word, it really is being used correctly in the JK Rowling scenario. You can go see my previous video if you want more details on the stuff that's already happened, but JK Rowling is now in the headlines again because the reviews are in on her latest novel in a crime series, and they just further cement her ideology against trans people and that trans people can be dangerous. She conflates them with cross-dressers and conflates some with cisgender men who cause violence towards women and those are things that she brings up in her essay and stuff which I've already covered so I'm just gonna cover the new novel that she has coming out. This novel is called Troubled Blood and it's released under JK Rowling's pseudonym Robert Galbraith which is recently brought to my attention the name of a psychologist I believe who helped pioneer conversion therapy for gay people so that in and of itself is kind of disturbing why would you pick that name um, obviously if you're choosing a pseudonym and you're already JK Rowling you're gonna do your research if someone else already has that name so I think it's kind of telling and fascinating even if it is a coincidence which Honestly, like it's probably been brought to her attention by now. Why is she still using that name? But it is quite interesting that the name that she has chosen is a male name and she has talked out so much against women transitioning, but I guess using a male name in order to make more money and sell more books is okay, but actually transitioning and having that as your identity is not okay to her, which really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Robert Galbraith Heath. He was an American psychiatrist and he followed the theory of biological psychiatry that organic defects were the sole source of mental illness and that consequently mental problems were treatable by physical means. So he performed many experiments there involving electrical stimulation of the brain via surgically implanted electrodes. He placed deep brain stimulation electrodes into the brain of more than 54 patients. It has been suggested that this work was financed in part by the CIA and US military. In 1972, he claimed to have converted a homosexual man to heterosexuality using DBS, deep brain stimulation. So yeah, there's a whole section on Wikipedia that you can read on gay conversion therapy underneath his name, and this is the name that J.K. Rowling has chosen to use as her pseudonym for her books outside of the Harry Potter series. So quite troubling. Now going back to the content of the book, so a while ago J.K. Rowling obviously showed support for Maya Forstater who is a woman that wanted the freedom to be able to misgender people in her workplace as she saw fit based on how she perceived them and her contract was not renewed with whatever company she was with and she acted as if she was discriminated against because she couldn't discriminate against other people and so that was what J.K. Rowling was in support of Maya Forstater and then she also went on to tweet that biological sex is immutable and it's real which most people don't disagree with to be honest and a lot of people highlighted that tweet and just used that as an argument in support of JK Rowling and they didn't really dive into her whole essay explaining her opinions and her reasonings but in that essay she said my interest in trans issues predated Maya's case by almost two years, during which I followed the debate around the concept of gender identity closely. I've met trans people and read sundry blogs 
books and articles by trans people, gender specialists, intersex people, psychologists, safeguarding experts, social workers, and doctors, and followed the discourse online and in traditional media. On one level, my interest in this issue has been professional because I'm writing a crime series set in the present day and my fictional female detective is of an age to be interested in and affected by these issues herself. So she alluded in this essay to the fact that she potentially will have a female detective character who will be in the age of trans people, whatever that means, and will be affected by these issues. So fast forward to now and her novel, Troubled Blood, now calls upon these themes that she's talking about earlier in her essay. So Troubled Blood is now receiving reviews from people who have had early access to it and the Telegraph review describes it as a book whose moral seems to be never trust a man in a dress and reviewer Jake Carriage revealed that the meat of the 900 page novel is an investigation into a cold case, the disappearance of a woman believed to be the victim of a cross-dressing serial killer. So it just goes to show that her obsession and fascination with trans people um, and trying to say that cross-dressers and trans people are a real threat to cisgender women, um, it comes from her own work. It comes from her own detective series and her own bid to make money off of it. She's painting this picture that we live in a world where women are at threat every single day from cisgender men who dress like women. And she conflates that with transgender people. She conflates it with um, cross-dressers, all of that kind of stuff. And it's just so unoriginal. Like, come on. A cross-dressing serial killer really, I don't think, has ever happened in history that we know of. And basically, it's already been done. Buffalo Bill, come on, you guys. Like, what is she getting at here? It's such an old rhetoric to have, and she says that her detective lives in the present and that she's affected by the issues of gender. And it really just sounds like this is taking place in the 90s Silence of the Lamb era, where everyone thinks that people who are transgender or gender non-conforming are perverts. And it's quite disturbing that she has all these arguments and this essay and all these tweets in support of Maya Forstater, and it's all building press and buzz leading up to her book, which is is the pinnacle of transphobia with a character that is a serial killer killing cisgender women and uses the tool of dressing like a woman in order to kill them. And that is just really sad and disturbing. It's pretty self-explanatory and I honestly don't feel like I really need to dive into why that's problematic for trans people. Based on what I read from JK Rowling's essay, she does not want people like me to have ac access to the women's washroom or to the women's change room at the gym. She would rather I have a different plane of existence and be excluded from society because I am transgender and excluded from those ways. She doesn't care about my safety and she doesn't want me to feel comfortable. She's just worried about cisgender women and it's kind of this weird misplaced worry because most of the cisgender women that I've come across and that I've talked to really have no issue with trans people sharing the same space as them. You can't conflate cisgender men who assault women with transgender women. Once you do that, it really causes a lot of issues and further violence and harm towards trans women who are already at further risk. I saw a tweet recently that 70% increase in violence against trans women just in Brazil alone. And JK Rowling is here writing a book about a serial killer cross-dresser. And it's just kind of, read the room, JK or Robert whichever name you want to go by. Let me know what you guys think down below. Obviously, I sound pretty heated about this topic just because I'm kind of tired of talking about it. Just don't buy her book. Don't pay her any mind. It's just sad for me because obviously I was very supportive of the Harry Potter series franchise. I grew up reading it and it was an escape for me and it was magical and fantastic and it was something that really gave me light in my dark childhood of not always feeling like I fit in because I wasn't able to express my gender identity. And so it's really sad to me that someone who was such a free spirit and such an inspiration has kind of turned the tables 
on me and trans people in general. Let me know what you guys think down below. Don't be afraid to comment, rate, and subscribe. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I wouldn't be able to keep making content without you guys. And if you're interested in seeing more daily updates, go follow my Instagram, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.